Howdy, 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 and welcome back to Kickstart. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a way that we can get our 3D cabinets onto our 2D pieces of paper using an AutoCAD command by the name of ViewBase. We're going to be primarily using this technique to get our 2D drawings, so stick with me, Ludwig from Markovellum, as we kickstart our shop drawings. Alrighty, and here we are back in our Kickstart project. And I'm going to be using a different method of getting my shop drawings onto my screen. And that's by using an AutoCAD function called ViewBase, something that was added in 2019. Now, to use ViewBase, we're going to go over to our AutoCAD ribbons. We're going to make sure that we are in our Home tab. And we're going to make sure that we can see this base button over here. This is that ViewBase command I was talking about. And what it does is it takes a 2D snapshot of your 3D solids on your model space. So I'm going to click on base. I'm going to have two options from model space and from inventor. We're going to be sticking with from model space from here on out. So we're going to click on from model space and it's going to ask me to select my 3D object. So I'm going to hover my mouse and just highlight my entire 3D wall elevation. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me, well, which one of your layout pages do you want to put this view base image? You can see down below, I've got a different set of options I can use from. So if I want to change which layout I'd like to put it in, I just simply have to type in that layout name. Since I'm happy with A301 being my first layout page over here, I'm going to straight up hit enter. Now it's going to take me to that A301 that I selected and it's a nice blank piece of paper and it's open for me to drop in my view base image. So the first image that's going to drop out is a front view. Now I can change what image it spits out first by going over to my orientation, clicking on this little arrow over here, and I can change what view I would like to select. If I want to straight up place a top view, just click on top, and you can see there's that top view right here. I'm going to leave it back onto front view because when you select a front view, and you select a point onto your screen that you want to put that front view on, say over here, if you left click once, it's going to give you a few options, which we're going to come back to. We're going to hit enter. And if we move our mouse, it then changes what view it's trying to do this angle from. So since I did a front view, if I move down, it's going to do a plan view. If I move to the bottom left, it's going to do a southwest view from that front. So I'm actually going to go down over here it looks like my plan view is going to be a bit big, not to worry, we can move them after that. And I'm going to move my mouse again to the bottom left, and all I'm doing right now is left clicking. I left click to put that plan view, I'm going to left click to put this north, northwest view or northeast view. My geometry is absolutely horrible. Geometry? Geography? That's how bad it is. I'm going to hit enter. And there are my three view base images. Now, there's a few things I need to adjust. First off, this guy is way too big for my drawing page, and I like to get, get this guy a little bit smaller. So what you need to do is you need to click on the view base image that you dropped in first. Since I dropped in a front view first, I'm gonna click on that image on the screen. Now, when you click on that image, you're gonna notice that the ribbons up the top have now changed. And these ribbons called drawing view are dedicated specifically for view base images. If I hit escape, it's back to normal, no more drawing tab. One more time, there he is right there. Now when I click on him, I can go to edit view. And with that, I can do a few things. One of those things is change whether I want to see hidden or only visible lines. So if we go over to this hidden lines button, click on visible lines, it's now giving me a bit more of a need to look. I can even shrink some of these view bases. Say this fellow over here, I'd like to shrink him a bit smaller. I'm going to click on this view base. There's my view base options. There's my edit view. And this time I can change what the scale of him needs to be. I'm going to make him fairly smaller. So I'm going to go over to 1 to 50. And there's that much smaller section over there. I'm going to hit escape. And this is an AutoCAD image. So I can move him using my AutoCAD commands. I can go over to my move button over here. Click on my view base, hit enter, pick a base point, and move them to where he needs to go. Let's pop him over here. Going to do the same thing for my elevation over here. Just going to move him from, from oh, wrong one. Going to try that one more time. Sticky fingers. 
That's better. Hit enter, base points, and move him to where he needs to go. Now you can see that when I try to move him, he's only moving up and down. I just need to hold shift, and that breaks that alignment. There he is, right over here. Good to go. So now I've got a plane elevation. I've got a front elevation right over here and a little 3D section over here, but I need to do this elevation over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my model and I'm gonna do my view base one more time. So I'm gonna go back to my base button up the top here, back to front model space. Now this time, I just want this elevation. So I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go highlight just this wall over here. I'm gonna hit enter over here. Hit enter one more time once he's asking me which layout I would like to place my cabinets. And you can see he's gonna to try to put a front view. And again, this is a front view. So I need to change it so he's looking at him from a different side. So I'm gonna go over to my orientation, click this arrow over here, and I'm gonna go looking at it from the right. Now it's starting to look a bit more like a wall elevation. I'm gonna place him just over here and hit enter. And if I move my mouse, again, I can now place different views, but for this one, I'm just gonna hit enter again without left clicking, because I just want this front view. And once again, there is my view base over here. And once again, I can click on this image, I can edit, I can go to hidden lines, I can go to visible lines, and I can even change the scale. I'm just gonna go over here, I'm just gonna type in one to 40, hit enter, see how he looks. Yeah, that's looking pretty all right, happy with that scale here. Now I'm doing this all on one paper just to demonstrate view base. However, you can add different view bases to different pages if need be as well. So, but for now I'm gonna stick with this page just for now, because there's other things that we can do with view base. For one, we can even draw sections over here. So what we need to do is we need to click on the cabinet that we'd like to draw a section of. Say I want to draw a section of this tall cabinet right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this view base and now my options once again have appeared. And I've got two options I can select from. Section or detail. Go stick with section, click on that button over here and it's going to ask me to do a straight line over what I'd like to section of. It's going to click over here to down here Left click, left click, and enter. Now, if I hover my mouse to the right of my view base, it's gonna to try to do that section from the right-hand side. If I'm moving my mouse to the left, he's gonna change that view. Now, I wanna do this section over here, but again, if I try to move my mouse up, he's not letting me move up until I press just once, shift to my keyboard, and now I can move him wherever I need him to go. I can go straight up over here if I need to. Hit enter, and that's now drawn a section of this cabinet. Now, if I click on this section over here, I can see there's a little rectangular vertex straight through the middle of my section. If I click on him and move my section across to say another cabinet, you will notice that my detail has now changed over here. This is again dynamic. If I move my section or if I add another section, these are just according to where that section is on my view base. But the fun doesn't stop there because we can also add details in a very similar way. If I hit escape and I wanna say do a detail of this little hinge over here, why not? I just need to click on my section over here and it once Again, my options for my view base have appeared and now I have detail to select from. Click detail over here. Pretty much click where I want the center of my detail to go. Save this hinge. Make a nice little circle. Left click and move where I want my detail to go. I'm gonna move them over here for the time being with a left click. Now I've got these options up the top for this particular detail. I can change how he looks. I personally like to have a smooth with connection line. I think it looks quite sharp, but I can also change the scale for this particular detail. I mean, that's the point of the detail. Make him nice and big, get everything in that nice detail. So I'm gonna go over to my scale button over here. I'm gonna change my scale to say, oh, I don't know, one to five. That's looking nice and big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter. And there's my detail right over here.
And again, similar to my section, he is dynamic. So if I click on my detail over here, move him to say this corner of my bench top, go back, and there is now that detail over here. Now with this, this is all 2D images, but they are somewhat linked to your 3D images. So if I go back to my model space right over here, and say I adjust this cabinet over here, I go over to my product prompts, go over to my cabinet, and change its width from 900 to say 1000. Now once I do that, if I go back to my A301 layout page, which has my view base, I'm gonna notice that, well, something has changed in my view base. And that is my cabinet has now disappeared. So now I need to bring my cabinet back and it's very easy and very quick to do so. All I need to do is to click on the view base that the first cabinet was dropped in with. So I'm gonna click on this view base over here. I'm gonna to go to edit view. And I've got an option on the left called model space selection. And model space selection is pretty much where you would tell your view base, these are the 3D models that I want you to draw in 2D. So if I click on my model space selection, it's gonna take me to my model space and I can see all my products are highlighted except for one. So if I highlight this cabinet just sitting right here on his lonesome and hit enter, it's gonna bring that cabinet back in those view bases. However, there's still one missing, this one over here. And this is because I drew this view base separate from these three over here. These two guys came from this parent view base over here. This one I drew separate and I selected the elevation separate. So, gonna click on him, follow the same route, edit view, and model space selection. And once again, very similar to what we saw before, everything that I wanted in the view base is highlighted, except for the one that I've adjusted. So. Highlight them one more time, hit enter. And now not only is my view base coming back with my cabinet, but also my section and my detail that's associated to that view base. Now that they can see the cabinet back in the image. And from here, you are now free to annotate and dimension on your paper space. So what you need to do is you need to go over to your annotate tab up the top here. If you've got all your annotation tools at your disposal. If I want dimension, I can go right ahead and do just that. Go over down here, to down here, and dimension as I go along. And that is ViewBase, one of the many tools that you can utilize within Microvelm to turn your 3D objects into 2D drawings for some middle. I hope you've enjoyed that video and found it informative. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, I'm Ludwig from Microvelm, and as usual, take care of yourselves, and have a wonderful day.